Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us on our integration webinar. So today we're going to be looking at the Surgery Connect integration software, and we'll look at installing, activating and configuring the software so that you can get the best out of the Surgery Connect package. So through the session today, we're going to have a brief introduction to the integration and what it can do for you. Uh, we'll look at the installation on both System 1 and on EMIS. The configuration of EMIS, which is a, an extra step that we need to do just on the EMIS database. And then we'll look at activating and configuring uh, the integration with both System 1 and EMIS. We'll finally look at the Surgery Connect user configuration so that you can then see um, what you'll need to change on the users so that they will then receive the pop ups. So the integration um, software provides a link between your Surgery Connect phone system and your clinical database, whether that's EMIS or System 1. So it will work with uh, both systems once it's installed. Um, and it, once it's set up, logging in and out of the desk phones within the practice can then be automated. Uh, patient records can all be presented with inbound calls when a, a call comes through. And you can also call a patient directly from the patient record in the clinical database, or you can send them a text, um, which and you can set up the text templates through the integration section in the configuration console. When it's running, the integration icon it will be seen in the taskbar down at the bottom of the screen. So you can see here um, down normally where your browser shows at the bottom of the screen, you would then have an orange circle which will be the integration software running in the background on that PC. There's no need to log into that each day. It will log in and out automatically uh, when the PC is logged into. So to install the software, um, it needs to be downloaded onto each PC and any laptops that you want to use the integration on to contact patients. The instructions are sent out by the service delivery team and they will include two links. Um, so if you need to get an IT team to download the uh, installation, then it will go through an MSI installer through the group policy. Or if you had admin rights, rights within the practice to download onto the PCs, then you can use the regular installer link, which will then download the installation onto that particular PC. That's the same with both System 1 and EMIS. Um, obviously, there'll be different files, um, and I'll show you that one later. We're going to stick with EMIS now and we'll have a look at setting up the system through EMIS. Um, EMIS will need to be configured as well to allow users to use the integration. So this is the extra step just for EMIS users. Um, it's need to be completed with somebody by with EMIS admin access in order to change the EMIS manager within EMIS itself. So when you log into EMIS and open up the menu, you're looking for system tools. And then within the system tools, the EMAS manager. That will then give you some menus and down at the bottom of the menus, you have the partner API. If you click on the partner API, that will then bring up a list. And within that list, you're looking for the Surgery Connect uh, entry within that list. It may not have a green tick uh, next to it yet. Um, so the next thing that you'll need to do is up at the top of the screen on EMIS, you'll have a tick that says activate application. So if you click on activate, that will then activate um, Surgery Connect within the EMIS application. Next within EMIS, you now need to give login access to each user that you want to use the integration. So up at the top of the screen, you're going to click on the icon under the patient API that says login access. That will then give you a list of users on the system and you need to make sure that both the auto login and the allow login columns are ticked for each user that you want to access the system, uh, the Surgery Connect integration. Once you've completed the users, you can click on OK. And then you also need to edit the users. So that's the icon just next to the login access. And once again, you'll go through the list just one tick this time to activate that on each user ID. Again, once you've completed the list of all the users within the practice, click on OK, and that will then be configured within EMIS. So we've now set up EMIS so that all the users can actually access the application. The application, once downloaded, will then need to be um, 
activated on each PC. And the activation needs to be run by each new user on each PC. So each time somebody new logs into that PC, it will run through the activation process within the Surgery Connect integration. If it's the first time you're doing it, if you can click on the icon on the screen, so that'll be the um, orange circle with Surgery Connect. And because we're looking at EMIS, it will say EMIS just after it. That will then run the Surgery Connect integration setup. And the first thing it's going to ask you for is your EMIS web CDB number. So input your CDB and the region that you're in. Click on the Save button. And then when you open EMIS, you'll then be asked to activate Surgery Connect. So the first time uh, you have logged into EMIS after the activation, it will then ask you to activate the product. You need to input your EMIS username and password and then click on activate product at the bottom of the screen. Now we've got the opportunity to match user, sorry, Surgery Connect user IDs to the EMIS logins so that login can then be automatic when people log into the clinical database. You can also pair the PCs on the desks to the, uh, the desk phones so that you can enable the hot desk function, which will then mean that anybody logging into that PC would be automatically logged into the phone that is next to that PC on the desk. Now you can do this um, if you're using EMIS for either from each PC or you can do it via the configuration console. It's often a lot easier done from the PCs because you actually need to know the name of each PC in order to do it by the configuration console. So if you go around each PC and log on, then that will activate it um, on each desk for you. So on the individual PCs, um, you can either log into EMIS and that will then launch the setup, or if EMIS is already running, if you click on the little arrow down in the bottom right hand corner, just next to where your clock is, um, that will show your hidden icons and Surgery Connect will be one of the hidden icons um, until it's actually activated. So if you right click on the Surgery Connect logo in the hidden icon tray, you can then click into setup from there. So if you, you, you just open EMIS and that will run the setup or you can access that via the um, hidden icon tray. Once you enter the setup, um, it will then bring up a setup screen where it will bring over the CDB number that you've already entered. It will then check any information. So on this screen, it's already recognized the um, EMIS login that we've used to log into EMIS and also the PC that we're logged in. So it's now giving us the opportunity to match that EMIS login with a Surgery Connect user and also to match the PC to a phone. In order to link up the user IDs, you will now need a PIN number, um, which is the Surgery Connect application PIN. That can be found in the configuration console. So again, you'll need supervisor access and then navigate to the configuration console via the single sign on. And then in the menu, there's an integrations option. You'll have an associations box as well as the uh, text templates box. If you click on the view associations, that will then give you the application pin on the screen at the top right hand side. If you hover over the pin, it will also tell you when that pin number expires. So if you're doing this for new users who've recently joined the practice, you may need to just check that that pin is still valid. Um, don't use old pins. If you just check that each time you're going to add a new user just to make sure that the pin hasn't been updated. You're then going to enter the pin onto the application setup box where it's asking for the pin and then click on submit. That will then give you a list of the Surgery Connect users that are set up on the system in the background. So you can then scroll down that list until you find the name that matches the EMIS login that we're using. Click on save and that will then save those details. So those two user IDs will then be matched. If you're in the practice, you can then match the desk phone to the PC. So if you just click on click to set up, that will then generate a pin on the screen and on the phone next to that PC, if you dial star 73887 and then follow the prompts that you'll be given in the message, 
entering the PIN when you're prompted on the phone. Once you've followed that procedure, you'll then have green boxes on the screen and ticks in the middle to indicate that we've now matched both the user ID and that phone to that particular PC. The integration software is now ready to be used by that user on that PC. Now you can also um, do the associations for users and PCs directly from the configuration console. Um, you will need supervisor access again to access the Surgery Connect console. When you go into the configuration console, click on the integrations and then click on view under the associations box. That will then bring up a list of Surgery Connect users on the left hand side. And once the integration has been activated on each PC, when somebody logs into EMIS, it will then save that EMIS user ID. So the EMIS user IDs will then be in a drop down that you can select on the right hand side. So you can select the correct user to match the Surgery Connect user directly from that screen there. To match the phones, just click on the uh, phones tab at the top and that will then give you a list of phones that have already been linked to particular PCs in green on the left hand side and any unassociated phones will show in grey on the right. Again, if the um, integration has been activated on a PC, once somebody logs into that PC, it will then save the PC name. So you can then select the PC name from the drop down box on the left hand, on the right hand side of the screen. As I said, this will mean uh, that you need to know which PC is in which room and match to which phone. We're going to swap over to system one now. Uh, before we look finally at the user integrate uh, configuration because the user configuration is the same. So system one, um, once you've installed it, obviously the install files will be exactly the same. So you'll have an MSI installer for group policy and a regular installer for individual users. Once installed, the integration again will need to be activated. So you can click on the icon on the screen, which will then bring up the system one integration screen. Again, it's making sure that you've got that pin number ready to go through with the activation. So that is still found in the integration section in the configuration console. Exactly the same as before. So clicking on associations, which will then show your pin. And again, if you hover over it, it will show the expiry date of that pin for you. Once you have the pin um, and you've got system one running in the background, click on the I'm ready button. The integration application will then need to be authenticated by um, system one. So you will receive a pop up box with an approve button down at the bottom. Now, unfortunately, this pop up doesn't always appear on the top of the screen. So you may need to minimize anything you've got on the screen in order to see the pop up box. But once you've got that and you can just click on the approve button and that will then allow um, system one and the integration software to communicate. Again, we will then be matching the system one user login to the Surgery Connect user login to allow automatic login and the PCs to any phones that you want linked as well. Now with system one, the extension pairing, so the linking of the phones needs to be done from each individual desk. However, once one person has logged in and activated uh, the system through system one, it will actually get a list of users so you can pair up the users directly through the configuration console on system one once the first person's logged in and configured themselves. So the first time um, that the system one goes through the setup, Surgery Connect integration will gather information around your system one setup. So it's taking the surgery and the staff details from a logging list directly from system one there. If you see any error messages on this page, uh, please make sure that you contact our support team before continuing. And um, you can raise a ticket via the support portal. If you can take a screenshot of any errors that you have on the screen and add that to the ticket, um, then the support team will be able to look into that for you. If everything's green though, we can click on next step at the bottom of the screen and that will then take us through to be linking our uh, user IDs for System 1 and Surgery Connect. Again, it's going to ask for the application pin that we've retrieved from the configuration console. So pop in the pin and click on submit. 
That will then give you a list of the Surgery Connect user IDs that you can scroll through to match the System 1 user ID that you're currently logged in as. Once you've matched up the user IDs, again, if you're in the practice, it will then allow you to match with the desk phones. So click on start. And then on the desk phone itself, dial star 266-344 if you're using System 1 integration and then follow the prompts again and enter the pin when prompted. If we are linking up the users via the configuration console, it will be in the integrations, in the associations as we were before, and then on the users tab with system one, you'll have your list of Surgery Connect users down the left hand side. And then once the first person has logged in and activated um, the integration, you'll then be able to pick the other users directly from the list on the right hand side. You'll also need to configure the actual users themselves. That can be done via the configuration console in the users menu and then on the individual users on their integration tab. Um, if you're removing users that have left Jazz, then you'll just need to delete the user um, and you can deactivate it depending on which system you're using. But uh, deleting the user then would actually delete their access via the integration as well. So we're editing this particular user. This one's got our EMIS login. It's exactly the same for System 1 here. <clears throat> and you can then set the action that happens when you log in. So on this one, we've got it automatically logging us in on the phone when we log in to System 1. So if we use the smart card in the keyboard or if they just log into a PC and then log into System 1, it will automatically log that user into the phone next to that PC. Uh, when we're logging out, you can choose between doing nothing, automatically logging you out or asking what's going to be happening. Um, and then you can also uh, say what you want to happen to the patient call recording association. So down at the bottom here, we've got what happens after each call with the call recording. And with system one um, and EMS that will then save it into the integration software. So it'll save a copy of the recording into the integration pop-ups. Now these actions can be set for each user via the configuration console or uh, they can be done by each user on their PCs when they first uh, set it up. They can do that through the hidden icon tray again. So down at the bottom right hand side, clicking on the little up arrow and then right clicking on Surgery Connect icon. If you then go into the settings menu, that will give each user the option then to set what happens when they log in, log out and what happens with those call recordings. These are the pop ups that the users will then see. So on an inbound call, um, you'll receive a pop up that will show you the inbound calling number, when that number last called and who they last spoke to, and also the patients that match that inbound call number. So when a call is answered uh, with the integration software, you can then just click on that patient's name. It will take you into the relevant database, whether that's EMIS or System 1, and load up that patient's details um, on the screen for you. When you're in a patient's record, um, you can use the integration software to call directly from the patient record. There are keyboard shortcuts, uh, so you can use Control, Shift and H to call the patient's home number with an active patient on the screen in front of you. Or you can click on the orange circle that will be down in the um, tray at the bottom, so in your taskbar at the bottom. That will then bring up the patient overview for the current patient that you're viewing in your clinical database. On the contacts tab, you'll then have their contact numbers. So you can either call them directly from the screen using the call buttons and the click to call technology, or you can send text as well from there. And text templates can be set up for the integration via the integrations tab on the configuration console. So during this session, we've had a look at the introduction to integration. We've looked at uh, the installation and then the specific configuration of EMIS and then activating the integration in both EMIS and System 1. We've also looked at the user configuration, which can either be done through the configuration console or individually by users on their PCs. <laughs>